We've all seen the YouTube videos where somebody works out like Chris Hemsworth for a day or spends 24 hours eating the meals that The Rock pretends he eats and then we're told here's what happened and nothing happens because it's only a single day. But the flip side is when an actor gets themselves in shape over an appropriate length of time some people will say, well, of course they did. They can train whenever they like, have access to all the right foods, they've got a personal coach, all their workouts are planned for them, and all the motivation in the world, because they're going to get paid 20 million for a movie as long as they don't show up chubby. Basically, when everything is just laid out for them, no need to worry about access to a gym or doing a nine to five job or your family or any normal hurdles that go with normal life, and all you need to do is what you're told, it's easy to achieve great results. Is it though? Easy? I'm going to find out what can be done if you leave normal life behind for 12 weeks solid, get a trainer, be told how to work out, live in the gym if need be, no cheating, diet on point, wife ignored, children neglected and a big target for some motivation. Will the results come thick and fast with minimal effort or, as I've always said, as you move beyond above average fitness, the massive increase in effort required, even with all the support in the world, won't be matched by a comparable uptick in fitness physique performance, at least not one that makes it worthwhile for most people. If you're thinking, that sounds like a lot of hard work, it will be. If you're thinking your wife might leave you and your children turn feral, that's a high possibility. And if you're thinking, are you sure The Rock doesn't actually eat those foods? No. What are you, 12? Check out the size of my huge balls. More on these bad boys in a minute. Above average. I've been saying for as long as this channel has been talking about fitness, be above average. That's all. Don't be below average. That's not healthy. But don't worry about being above, above average. Because the extra benefits are not worth the extra hassle of getting there for most people. Now clearly, there are some who really want to be way above average. They might even want to be the best. Competitive athletes or people who just simply get enjoyment from doing very little other than focusing on being better at one thing than anybody else. Cool, let them. If that's you, amazing, keep at it. We want them, we want you to feel like that. It gives us something to go and watch at the weekends when we go and see sports. And I don't think there's any real danger of LeBron James or random Bob who's killing himself to get a 16 minute park run hearing me and changing what they do anyway. But most people are where most people are in the middle, maybe even slightly below that. And I, having been down there, think it's important that they understand that a modest amount of effort will elevate them to a place where the results they obtain, whether it's in how they look, how they feel, how far behind Bob they are at a park run, those results will be pleasing to them in a way that is significant compared to how hard it was to achieve them. In simple terms, if most people did a little bit extra, they'd be an awful lot happier. You don't need to be the best version of you, past the sick bucket, just be a better version than you are. Ignore Instagram's version of ideal, it's all made up anyway. Just up your game a bit and enjoy doing so. And I love that transition from not too good at something to not too bad at something, because it does come relatively easily. It's why I've done sports that I've never done before or wasn't physically suited to. In a few weeks, in fact, me and Nixon are back in Wales racing over the mountains in an event that we will hopefully, hopefully finish in the top half of, just about, but were pretty rubbish when we first went mountain trail running. Improving, put simply, is fun. Achieving excellence, becoming great, is not the same sort of fun, if it's even fun at all. And it's not just sporting performance. Last year, I did an eight week fat loss journey that finished with me not achieving the results I set out to achieve, but concluding that given the eight weeks had not been particularly tough, with a few cheat days here and there, the above average results were fine by me. Nothing more was needed. So why am I spending the next 12 weeks training, living in a way that is above, above, above average, that's too many aboves, doesn't matter. It's a bit of an experiment. As I said at the start, people will sometimes say that actors that get themselves in shape with three months intense training before a film do so easily because what they need to do is laid out for them. It's simple. And I've always thought, is it? You might have a personal trainer, but you still have to pick up the weight or put on your shoes and go out for a run. You still have to put the food in your mouth or not put the food in your mouth. You're still a husband or a wife or a parent and you're not an athlete. You're not somebody whose life has always revolved around this physical goal. Your job is something else, an actor. You have responsibilities and time commitments and all that is tough. And if there weren't a movie and a paycheck at the end of it, 
most people clearly wouldn't bother and shouldn't bother. Actually, training like Chris Hemsworth for a day is actually probably more sensible than training like him normally because they aren't shortcutting past the reality that pushing your performance beyond a certain point is very hard work. You need more and more effort, yet see smaller and smaller improvements the higher up the ladder you go. But I've never had reason or motivation to test that theory. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe with the right backup, support, infrastructure around you, you can easily live in the upper echelons of physical achievement. The rewards, even though they don't include a movie deal, still well worth the effort. Because with help, the effort is simply less. Never had a reason to test that until now. You may recall, a couple of weeks ago, I entered High Rocks in Manchester. It's a multi-discipline fitness competition designed to allow pretty much anybody to go along, rock up and compete against themselves or others and see how they stack up. And I stacked up okay. I was fifth in my age group out of 30 people. And normally, having done that, I would then just carry on training the way I train, eating the way I eat, and maybe do another one, maybe not, maybe do something else completely. But when I looked over the details of my performance, the results from Manchester, it was pretty evident that some things I did there really badly. Burpee jumps, lunges, wall balls, even maintaining my running pace, all average at best. The reason my overall result was all right was because on the things I did well at, I did really well at. Predominantly, events where the only skill required was being a big lump, pushing the sled, pulling the sled, rowing the rower, carrying the weights. So looking at the results, it occurred to me that if I had the slightest idea what I was doing when it came to training, I could probably use those results and put together a plan that capitalized on the things I do well and address the things I do badly in order that my overall performance would jump up a lot, a real lot. If I did the things I do badly half as well as the things I do well, I could even win my age group. And if you win your age group in High Rocks, in fact, if you even get on the podium, you get this little tea towel thing, and that would look awesome hanging up in the garage. But I don't know what I'm doing. In fact, I'm constantly asked by people on here on Instagram and on Facebook, how do I combine my weights and endurance training? What does it look like? And embarrassingly, my answer is always the same. I kind of go to the gym and lift weights sometimes, and then sometimes I go running or cycling, and that's it. Don't expect the Mark Lewis training program anytime soon. And so I decided that my next high rocks in London in three months time, I'd do with Jenna, husband and wife in the mixed pairs, just for fun. And she agreed, looking forward to it. She was even doing burpees in the gym yesterday, faster than me annoyingly. And then she saw me looking over the results from Manchester and working out where I'd have been placed if I'd have been better at this and better at that. And she said, why don't we do the pairs at the next event after London? And you take the next three months train properly, see what you can actually do, like really do. Not since Adrian popped up on the porch of the Russian log cabin has a wife so motivated her husband. And like Rocky grabbing a skipping rope, I grabbed my balls, which is the ugliest segue ever into a thank you, a fitness bug, link down below. They were so disgusted with my wall ball performance, they sent me two which is awesome because my gym only has small medicine balls, so these are perfect. I'm putting up a target on the side of the house. By the time London comes around, I'm gonna be a wall ball monster. Uh, again, fitness bug, thank you very much. But there is more to this process than big old balls. So I made a few inquiries. I've got myself a coach, Dave Peters, out of Rumble Fitness in Milton Keynes. He's a specialist at preparing people for OCR and now High Rocks events. I have access to a gym anytime I like because it's two minutes from my house. That and my work from home status in my real job means I can train whenever I want. I have no restrictions. My family, my dogs, they've all agreed to get out of the way for the next three months within reason. And importantly, punch me in the face if they see me pick up a donut. Put that cookie down. Basically, everything is set for me to have a life revolving around this one thing. With all the help, assistance, expertise that I need, I'm going to live a Rocky montage. <laughs> What is that gonna look like? Don't worry, I'm gonna keep you completely in the loop with videos on typical days training, typical days meals, the sessions I'm doing with Dave, how I'm incorporating my distance running, my cycling, my Zwift into it all, because I still wanna be able to do those things. In fact, I did a Zwift ride just last night, finished it with 100 squats with a ball, and then jumped in the sauna where I looked over my results from the Zwift ride and realized I'd come last. And most importantly, how I'm feeling about the process. Am I going stir crazy? Is it fun and enjoyable to just sort of autopilot your way through a day's training? Is it easy? And I have gas central heating. What am I doing with all the firewood? 
And I should add, all the regular videos will also be popping up. Me and Nixon are running that mountain race. You're gonna see that. I'm still gonna be on Zwift on a regular basis. You're gonna see all that too. Right now, it is only week one, and so far, I can tell you, I'm really hungry all the time, it sucks. My evening training session is cardio based, which could be anything from a long, slow run to an intense hour bouncing between stations in the gym or that bike ride last night. My morning session is then much more heavy weights based. All of that is sucking up calories at a far greater rate than I'm eating them. Physically, that's a good thing because I have plenty of spare calories stored upon me to fuel it all. And the plan is to come in much lighter for London than I was at Manchester. But psychologically, it's not fun at all so far. Given my last video was on binge eating, will a strict diet for 12 weeks result in some sort of horrific eat-a-thon that sets me back massively? Who knows, we will see. If it does, I might have to literally move to a Russian log cabin beyond the reach of cookies and burgers. So at this stage, this video is more just a setting the scene for what is gonna come. And obviously, to invite you to stick your questions down in the comments, as always, if there's anything you're interested in learning about as I go through the process. What is useful to do at this point is probably to lay out some expectations. I use the word expectation instead of goals deliberately. I'm fairly convinced that what I think will happen will happen. On the positive side, I expect to get much fitter, much leaner, leaner than I've ever been. I also hope to learn a lot about training and programming that training. So in the future, I can then incorporate it into the sessions I plan for myself. And I expect to be on the podium at High Rocks for my age group, almost. There is always the possibility that a few people will just compete in London for the first time out of the blue and just blow me away. I can't control that. But I expect to reduce my time for one hour 18 to under one hour 10, that's 70 minutes. That would have got me on the podium in Manchester. It would be disappointing if it doesn't work in London. So if there is a goal of sorts, goal A, win my age group, goal B, podium my age group, goal C, sub 70 minutes. And although it's the third goal, because it's the third most impressive, it's the one I'm taking to heart because I'm very much in control of that. In fact, I even, I even wrote it on my shoe. But on the negative side, I expect the discomfort, the inconvenience and a life upheaval required to be unpleasant. And for what? To save myself eight minutes competing with a bunch of other old people in an event no one's ever heard of. And really, what would have been more enjoyable? Stuffing myself stupid over Christmas, training hard but not that hard, rocking up at Manchester to take fifth, or spending three months doing all this, crashing the share price of Burger King, becoming hated by my family for a tea towel. I fully expect to return back to the land of just above average after this whole process, like a scout that's gone on the head, and let you know it's not worth going there. If you're already running a 23 minute park run, go hug your kids instead of another training session. If you're whizzing around on Zwift as a decent C group rider, take your wife out to dinner before you buy another carbon fiber gadget for your bike. If you're already pretty good, that's probably pretty good enough. That is a message I shall bring back from my expedition to excellence. And to be honest, the alternative doesn't really bear thinking about because if having elevated myself to that new level, I decide that's where I'm gonna stay, it is gonna make selling merchandise look ridiculous. Okay, as I say, this is just a little day one description of what the next few months have in store. Hope is you can follow along and see how that progresses with all the other fun stuff that will crop up during that time too. If you have not yet liked and subscribed, please do so because it just makes me feel really happy and takes my mind off wanting to eat everything in sight. Again, stick your questions down below and I will see you on the next one.